Welcome to Culture Talk, where we talk about culturally relevant topics that you can use to start conversations about your faith. I'm joined today with biochemist Fuzzle Rana, and we're going to be talking about WandaVision. Thank you for joining us, Fuzz. Sandra, thanks for having me. So before we dive in, a quick recap for those who are unfamiliar. WandaVision is a show on Disney Plus, and it centers on the Marvel characters Wanda Maximoff and Vision, and it's set in an alternate reality in which Vision isn't dead. So our viewers might be wondering, how does this relate to the Christian faith? Bear with us, I promise it does. Um, First, before we dive in, Fuzz, can you explain who or what Vision is? Yeah, and in interest of full disclosure, I've not watched WandaVision yet. That's (laughs) on my to-do list. I want to wait for all the episodes to, to be released so I can binge watch it. But I am familiar with the character Vision with the character Scarlet Witch and some of the comic book story arcs that actually inspired WandaVision. And and in short, Vision, I think most people are aware, is an android that is also an artificial intelligence system. And so in many respects, you could think of Vision as being kind of an archetype of sorts for what what philosophers and, and scientists would refer to who has a post-human future. Yeah, so then when we, when we think of vision as representing a post-human future, how then do we connect that to scientific endeavors, like real scientific endeavors that are going on right now? What does that look like? Yeah, well, there's, a, yeah, of course, a lot of interest in developing artificial intelligence systems, but uh, there's also a movement known as transhumanism where people that are in that movement argue that really science and technology is going to be the way in which we ultimately alleviate pain and suffering in the world and uh, uh, usher us in as humanity into a utopian type of future. And they, their vision is that we really should be using science and technology as a way to modify uh, our biological makeups to enhance our capabilities beyond our natural limits, our, our strength, our intelligence, our psychological well-being. And in fact, they argue that our flaws as human beings and our biological limits actually are producing human pain and suffering. And so if we can correct that, we can actually, again, usher in a utopian future. Many people that hold to transhumanism even argue that this is a pathway to attain a type of immortality And so many people that are transhumanists envision a post-human future where we have altered ourselves with technology to such a degree that we wouldn't even recognize ourselves anymore as being human beings. But as part of that, they also see artificial intelligence systems as being uh, one of those post-human type of species where there would be a a collection of different post-humans that exist Again, AI systems being one of them. And of course they argue that, hey, these types of systems ought to have the same kind of rights as we would have as well. And so Vision is an interesting character because he is not only sentient and conscious and self-aware and autonomous, but he's also able to enter into this love relationship with uh, Wanda Maximoff. Um, How do we start to have conversations about our faith? Like how does it even connect? Uh, How is this technology relevant to conversations about our faith? Yeah, well, you know, what's interesting to me is that when it comes to a future with potential AIs that that might be quote unquote self-aware or sentient, um, there's really two ways that people conceive these AI systems. One is like vision in which he's a heroic benign figure And the other is like an Ultron, where it's an AI system that could actually harm us as human beings. And in fact, there's a number of scholars like Elon Musk who are concerned that uh, these AI systems actually could rule over us eventually if they surpass our capabilities. They could rule over us being kind of like overlords or even drive humanity to extinction. And so interestingly enough, Uh, People like Elon Musk have uh, argued that we need to develop what they call neural implants or brain-computer interfaces that allow us to actually 
uh, interface our brains, our minds with computer systems to augment our intelligence. So Elon Musk has formed a company called Neuralink uh, that is developing these neural implants where the ultimate motivation is really a transhumanist motivation where he wants to, to alter humanity in order to save humanity from the existential threat of AI systems. Um, there's a lot definitely to unpack with this topic. And I know that you've written, first of all, you've written a book, Humans 2.0, which I think does a really great job of giving all of the information, um, what the pros and cons are as far as transhumanism goes and this movement. Um, but I think as we're talking about WandaVision and we're talking about um, the motivation with what's happening there with vision and how it does actually really relate to what we see with transhumanism, um, as far as WandaVision goes, this alternate reality um, is created in an effort really to kind of escape reality and to avoid dealing with death and grief. Um, and it seems like there's a similarity there with transhumanism and, and uh, thinking about the hope that we're putting in, in transhumanism. Yeah, I mean, really, you know, people that are transhumanists are ultimately seeking after really the same thing that we as Christians would desire, which is a world without pain and suffering, a world where humanity flourishes, and ultimately the hope of eternal life. And fortunately, transhumanists are placing their hope and trust in technology, whereas Christians were placing our hope and trust in the person of Christ. And unfortunately, you know, technology can never save us. It can improve the, the quality of our lives. It can promote human flourishing, but it can't truly save us. And in one real easy way to understand why that's the case is something called the salvation paradox. Because if we modify ourselves to such a degree that we no longer are humans, but we're post-humans, then that which we've actually saved isn't us anymore. It's what we've actually created. So that, that's the paradox, that's the irony of the transhumanist vision. So yeah, I think that's a very fascinating topic. So as we look at this technology um, that we see in WandaVision, um, but that we see also happening in, in real life, how can we view that with fairness and without fear from a Christian perspective? Well, I think it goes back to this idea that really science and technology are a gift that God has given to us. And it's these, these capabilities are designed for us to actually, uh, you know, fulfill the, the kingdom mandates, chief of which is to love our neighbor as ourself. And so these technologies that are fueling the transhumanist vision can actually be, be used for enormous amount of good in terms of, you know, the alleviating the pain and suffering caused by diseases and injury that are debilitating spurring economic growth. So what we want to do as Christians is recognize that the benefit of these technologies, but also understand the risks and then be able to really articulate uh, a, a, a Christian worldview based cost benefit analysis with these technologies and help shape the direction our society goes with these technologies. Yeah, I hope that people will really dive into the content that you have provided because again, it's, it's such a deep topic and we have a limited amount of time to talk about it here. So thank you so much Fuss, for, for joining us to talk about WandaVision and transhumanism. If you would like to check out more on this topic, go to reasons.org and search for Neuralink and also look for Humans 2.0 anywhere that you buy books.